Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lada basi tele bosi tara bosi hana baya kanda maya. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory be to God forever and ever. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, Almighty God. Lord, we are thankful. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you for another wonderful day. Lord, we bless your holy name. Thank you because you alone are God. Mali Hedo Bahuda La Bahanda Bakuria. Mali the Bosha Rosso Tori Ali Mahada. Lekeli Bosha to Zipari Animos Kanda. Father, we are thankful to you. Thank you for another wonderful day. We give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Almighty God, we honor you, we exalt you, we ascribe all praises, all power, all authority in heaven, all authority on earth is yours. We ascribe all glory, praise, honor, power, dominion, majesty is yours. Father, we thank you. Thank you for another wonderful day. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you. Thank you because you are our Father that cares about us, that loves us immensely and immeasurably. Thank you because you love us even when we did not know you. We are grateful. Thank you for the sun that ruled the day. Thank you for the moon that ruled the night. Thank you because you are a God that has set your thrones in the heavens. Thank you, Almighty God, because your kingdom ruled over all kingdoms. Father, thank you because the earth is your footstool. You are great. You are mighty, and we exalt you. You are the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. You are the God of all flesh. You are the God that has all powers. You are the ancient of days. There is none we can liken unto you. There is nothing you cannot do. There is nothing impossible with you. You are God. Melehe do Barotolia. When you choose to do a thing, no man, no power, no throne, no altar, no dominion can hinder you. You are God. And we bless your holy name. Thank you, Father, because you are God. We thank you for this last Sunday in the month of August. We thank you for the beginning of the month, and we are grateful to see this day. Thank you for another opportunity, Almighty God, to see the sun shine in the land of the living. We are thankful. Father, I take all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Father, we demand the heaven over us to be open. Father, send your Holy Spirit to come upon us in a new way, in a greater way, in a new way, in a greater dimension, in the mighty name of Let there be an outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon us even this hour. In the name of Holy Spirit, we invite you. I invite you to come. Let your word, let the word that will go out of my mouth be anointed. Let the word be empowered. Let the word bring life to somebody. Let the word bring healing, bring deliverance, bring victory, bring a breakthrough to somebody in the name of Jesus. Again, I welcome you to Restorers House International Ministries. We are based out here in Stratford in London. And if you are in the vicinity, if you are in the environs, please do um, feel free. Uh, reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to welcome you. Uh, and I encourage you to share this sermon with somebody. This will bless somebody. This will bless you. Uh, share this sermon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join us on Facebook. Join us in church in person. And do much God will bless you richly. We're in the Stratford area of London. Uh, close to Romford, Ilford, Leighton, Leighton Stowe, Waltham Stowe, um, Bow, Bromley by Bow, uh, Opney, and all of these environments, this is where we are. Please join us, and your Almighty God will bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Uh, this is the last Sunday of the month. I just feel I should pray for you. La Hosa Paradelia. I feel the Lord is saying I should pray with you. And I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. This month of August, it shall not end without you expect your expectation being manifested in the name of Jesus. Ah, I say this month. It shall end well for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare over you. I say this month, it shall end well for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you this month, good news and good reports shall cause loud shouts of rejoicing and rejoicing in your home in this new week that we are entering into in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you, child of God. I feel I pray for somebody. The Lord has sent a word to somebody. Last Sunday, I preached on the sermon called Good News. Today, I pray. I pray for somebody. Today is the last Sunday in the new month, in the month of August. It shall not be sorrowful for you. 
Ah, in the name of Jesus. I say it shall not be sorrowful for you. It shall not be sorrowful in your home. It shall not be bad report in your home. In the mighty name of Jesus. You started this month well. You will end well. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the new season that is coming ahead. In the new month. In the new week that is coming ahead. I prophesy in La Hosea Pari Ali Mahanda. The destiny of your children. Ah, the destiny of your children shall not be hindered. In the name of, I say the destiny of your children, it shall not be delayed. It shall not be diverted. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I prophesy for somebody. Somebody that will hear this. Somebody that will share this. Somebody in the name of Jesus that will minister, that will post this. I pray for you. I say a new thing. In the new week that you're entering into, a new beginning, Marco I pray for you. In Katoria, I say, I say a new journey that will usher in a fresh wave of breakthrough. A fresh wave of breakthrough. A fresh wave of victory. It shall open for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for somebody hearing me. I pray for somebody that will be faithful to share this with somebody. I say by the mark of the blood of the Lamb. By the mark of the blood of Jesus Christ, you are protected, you are shielded from every evil in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare over you, over your loved ones, I say no weapon formed against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare with the Spirit of God, with the power of the Holy Mighty God, I say the doors of good things. The doors of good things that you are expecting, it shall not be denied you. In the ah, I say the doors that you are expecting to open for you, those doors shall not be closed before you. It shall not be delayed. Neither shall it be. Neither shall the doors or the windows of blessing of this week of this new month that is open. Neither shall it shut against you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Hallelujah. I prophesy to somebody in the name of Jesus, hearing me. I prophesy to somebody that will share this message. Somebody that will receive this message with faith. I said the blessings of those that are perishing. The blessings of those that are perishing. It shall come to you. Those that their life is about to perish. Those that their life is about to waste. Their blessings will come to you. Their position will come to you. They will make a mistake. And their blessings will locate you. In them, I say the blessings of God. The favor of the almighty God. The aroma of God's goodness. That makes rich and has no sorrow. It shall rest upon you. Even as the dew of the morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. In La Husa Paria. And so shall it be. And finally I declare. By the spirit of the almighty God. I say in the name that is above every other name because the Bible says I shall decree a thing and it shall be established. And so with that authority, the Bible says whatever I bind here on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever I bound here on earth is bound here on earth. Whatever I bound in heaven is bound in heaven. Whatever I loose in heaven is loose in heaven. Whatever I loose here on earth is loose on earth. So I decree and I declare over you. Child of God, I said this new week shall open our arms to embrace you. It shall embrace you with creativity, with creative ideas, with perfection, and the delivery of those things spoken to you of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you agree with me, I say, so shall it be. Ha! Carol Marcelli, I said, so shall it be. And I thank you for those that are joining me. I pray that the Almighty God, He will never fail you. And so today, the title of my message, I'm going to preach very quickly. I feel the anointing of the Almighty God. To somebody hearing me, I say to you, this is the word of the Almighty God to you. The Lord will not fail you. That is the title of my message. The Lord will not fail you. I said last week, I say the Lord has good news. There is good news for you. And I say to you today, that God that promised good news to you, he will not fail you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, why? The Lord cannot lie. The almighty God, he cannot lie. The God of Israel, he cannot lie. The Lord almighty, it is impossible for God to lie. Even the Bible refers to say, I say the God that cannot lie. <laughs> he didn't say Pastor Ben cannot lie. He said the God that cannot lie. Go to Titus. Let me find it for you. Titus chapter number one. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at verse number two. It is there the B part says that in which God, it says in hope of eternal life, which God, Malihedu, which God, that what? That cannot lie. Can you see it in your own Bible? Which God, in the hope of eternal life, which God cannot lie? He promised that it will happen, so he cannot lie. So many people depend on this word of God. He said, 
wait God in hope. We are hoping for it. There are things you are hoping for. Wait for it. They shall come to pass. You didn't hear me. There are things you are expecting. Wait for it. And the Bible says, I hope make it not ashamed. For the love of God was shed abroad upon our hearts. So hope. Keep hoping. Whatever God says to you, whatever you have discovered in the word of God, keep waiting, keep hoping, keep trusting, and there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. The promises of God, child of God, hear me. The promises of the almighty God cannot fail. I will say that one more time. I said the promises of God. Carlos Italy Mahanda. The promises of the Almighty God cannot fail, I say with boldness. Healer has a prayer. The promises of the Almighty God cannot fail. Why? Because the words of God are yea and amen. It is final. The Bible says, whatever the Lord desires, whatever the Lord desires, whatever the Lord speaks, you know, whatever the Lord decrees, whatever the Lord desires, it is done. The words of God cannot fail. And that's why the Lord has asked me to tell somebody to say, the Lord, the one you are trusting for good news, he will not fail you in Jesus' name. It is impossible for the Almighty God to lie. <laughs> it is impossible for the Almighty God to lie. It is impossible for him to fail. If it is impossible for God to lie, that means it is impossible for the word of God to fail. That's why the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will do what? He will do what he says. He will grant you the desires of your heart. It is impossible for the Almighty God to fail. Whatever God said in his word, it is like himself. The word of God is God. <laughs> God cannot change. If you know that God cannot change, then God cannot lie when God says it is written. And you have it in your Bible. Yeah. They may have different translations. They may have different versions. But the word of God is eternal. The word of God never changes. The word of God never fails. Somebody shout hallelujah. It never fails. It never failed yesterday. It did not fail in, in, in the years before. It did not fail the progenitors. It did not fail in the time of the, the prophets. It did not fail in the time of the elders. In my own time, it will not fail in the mighty name of Jesus. I have hope. I trust the word of God. I depend. I lean heavily on the word of God. It is about time because the Lord will never fail. Hear me, child of God. How do I know? Listen, at redemption, when you are redeemed, the word of God that can never lie, he said, because of his love for you, he removed you from your dust level. At redemption, carry my hand up. Hear me. This is what gives me confidence. I don't know about you. At redemption, the word of God that cannot lie, the word of God that is true, the word of God that is yea and amen, the word of God that never fails. At redemption, the word of God said, I am removed from the dust level. <laughs> so the Bible says, I am seated where? I am seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Far! Far above. So what are you rolling on the ground for? What are you doing on the ground, my friend? Can you shake up that dust and say, I am for the top. I am not for the ground. What are you doing on the ground? When the word of God that cannot lie, when the word of God that cannot fail, he said, you are seated. Kuri Mahanda. Let me show you Ephesians chapter number two. Look at what the Bible says. Uh, look at verse number four. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us. You see that? That's the beginning. Not just love, great love. Wherewith he loved us. Even when we were what? We were dead in sin. You know, you were dead in sins. Had what? Had quickened us together. He had quickened us together in Christ or with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And have what? And has raised us up. You see that? God says, I have raised you up. He has raised us up together and made us to sit where? In the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Not with him, in. And that's why I say to you, 
I am paradise. Paradia. I am in Christ. Are you in Christ? I am in Christ. Are you in Christ? Thank you for those that have joined us. Thank you, family. Thank you for those that are commenting. You will be a partaker of the faithfulness of the Almighty God. You say, I am in Christ. And that's why I say, because I am hidden in Christ Jesus for the power of darkness, for wickedness, for curses, for spells, for child enchantment, for divination, for the handwriting and ordinances of hell to touch me, you must touch Jesus. Because, listen to that scripture. Let me find it to you again. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4, it says in verse number 6, And had raised us up together and made us what? Sit together in heavenly places in, not with, in Christ Jesus. That's what the scripture says. That's the word of God, the God that cannot lie. He has made you to sit in. You are in Jesus. I am in Jesus. I am untouchable. Why don't you say that? I am uncursable. I am unmolestable. I am unassortable. Whatever it is that is causing others to fail, drawing people to the ground level, it has no power over me. Whatever generational curses or generational spells, whatever generational say, no matter the ordinances that work it from father to sons, in La Husa Paria, I have changed lineage. I belong to Jesus. I am seated in Jesus Christ in the heavenly places. What about you, child of God? And God wants to show you his kindness because of Jesus Christ. Let me move along. Praise the name of the Lord. So why are you still in love? Why are you still in love with the ground level when God says you are seated in the heavenly places? Why are the forces and the powers that are on the ground level still dragging and pulling you down? <laughs> Can you imagine? You're on the twelfth floor and the, uh, your enemy on the ground floor. How can the person who is on the ground floor be dragging you? Uh -uh. Our mumu not too much. Eh? How can somebody on the ground level, Makuze area, somebody who is in Christ Jesus, somebody who is seated in the heavenly places, Hikatoria, that is the word of God, the God that cannot lie, the God that cannot fail. That's why he says you are seated in the heavenly places. So why are you still on the ground level? Why are the forces of, and the powers of darkness, why are they dragging you to the ground? Why are they still pulling you to the ground? <laughs> it is you that gave them room. Don't give room to the devil. That's what the Bible says. It says give no room. Give no room to the devil. Don't give any room. Don't give any room. <laughs> Let your yes be yes. Let your no be your no. Hallelujah to Jesus. Don't give any room. You see, God said, I want to reveal my exceeding riches. God said, I want to reveal my kindness to you. Will you not just open your arm and say, Lord, show me your goodness. In this week I am entering into, I am tired of the ground level. I am tired of the battle on the ground level. Lord, show me your goodness. Lord, show me your kindness. This week I am entering into, why don't you say that, Lord, show me your kindness. Lord, show me your loving kindness. Let your loving kindness speak in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. And so I pray for you. May the wicked and the evil powers the ones that are dragging you away from your from the love of God, dragging you away from the mercy of God, dragging you away from the goodness of God, dragging you away from the riches of God, dragging you from the high place that your Almighty God has positioned you. May your Almighty God begin to lose you now and let you go. I command the power of God to lose you now and let you go in the mighty name of Jesus. Look at what the Bible says in Joshua. Joshua chapter 21, hallelujah to Jesus. Joshua chapter 21, look at verse 45. The word of God says there, not one of the Lord's promises <laughs> to Israel failed. Not one. Not one. I will wait for you. Carry my hand up. Joshua chapter 21. It says, not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. That's the new international version I just read to you. Not one. And that's why I said to you confidently, the Lord will not fail you. He promises you, says, I have good news for you. That God that says, I have good news for you, he will not fail you. He will not deny you. It is impossible for him to fail. That's what Joshua 21, 45 says. It says, the Lord, no one of the world that God promised Israel, the nation, the people of Israel, not one of them failed. The word of God will not fail in your life. Thank you. The Almighty God will favor you in the name of Jesus. Now, I pray, may the words of the Almighty God, the words that you have read, 
the ones you have discovered in the word of God, the one that has been spoken over you to bring you victory, it will bring you victory, it will bring you breakthrough, it will bring you healing, it will bring you deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are sick in your body, may this word of life coming your way, may it bring you life in Jesus' name. May it bring you life in Jesus' name. Luke says the same thing. If you look in Luke chapter number 1, uh, verse 37 there. Luke chapter number 1, verse 37, it says, For no word from God will ever fail. No word from your mighty God will ever fail. Luke chapter 1, and verse 37. And that's why I say, the Lord will never fail. He will not fail you. He has never failed. He will not fail you in Jesus' precious name. I said, the Almighty God, He will never fail you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, this God, He spoke the heavens. He spoke the heaven and the earth into existence by His word, and it manifested. Praise the name of the Lord. He spoke the heaven and the earth into manifestation. Glory be to God. And it manifested. The heaven and the earth manifested at the word of God. He called the sun and the moon into existence and the ordinances of the sun to rule the day and the ordinances of the moon to rule the night. And it is so often today. I've not seen the moon outside. When there is moon, they call it the eclipse. And everybody is aware of that. It is according to the word of God. And it has not changed. And that's why I say the word of God, the one that commanded the ordinances of the sun to rule the day, the ordinances of the moon to rule the night. And it has never failed. That God will not fail in your life. You see, from the ages past, He promised redemption to those that will what that will accept and believe in the age, right from the time Jesus even has not manifested. He offered righteousness. God offered justification. God offered purification. He offered eternal life to those that will believe through faith. And that's why the Bible says, And Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So it was not the works of Abraham that made him to be saved or justified or, or, or to be righteous. No, it was not his good works that made him righteous. The Bible says, and Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Hallelujah to Jesus. That God. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, he can never lie. In your own time, he will not lie. The Lord will not lie. He will not lie for to you. He will not fail you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Can you just invite somebody? Ensure somebody in your family is hearing this. Ensure you are sharing this with somebody because this will change somebody's story for good. You didn't hear me. I say, this word that you are hearing, because the promise of God that I hear and amen, he promised good news. And I say, this God can never lie. If he promises you good news of deliverance or prosperity, that God will never fail. You see, whatever God says, it shall come to pass and will never change. Whatever God says, it is only God that can change his mind. He did it before. Remember when Hezekiah, a prophet went to the, the king, Hezekiah, said, Hezekiah, pack your load, you will die. The same God told the prophet, go back and tell him, I have forgiven him. I have added 15 years. It was God that gave the... So only God can do the things that man cannot do. God told him, go back and tell King Ezekiah, I have added 15 years simply because the man turned around. The man was remorseful. So any man who is remorseful, any man who is broken, any man who says, Lord, I cannot make it by myself. Because the Bible says, for by strength shall no man prevail. I cannot prevail in this battle, in this journey of life, in this work that I'm doing. It is not enough for me. It cannot make me prosperous. Lord, I need your mercy. If you turn to the Almighty God with your mighty Lord, with all of your heart, he will change your circumstances. I say, God will change your circumstances. You see, this is what God, the God, the Almighty God, the one that can never lie. This is what they said about you. Aren't you excited? The Almighty God says, You are the head. <laughs> no, he was talking about me. He says, Ben, you are the head and not the thing. I say, Amen. What do you say to that? This week, men will celebrate you, men will see you as a head in Jesus' name. God Almighty says about you, the one that cannot lie, the one that cannot fail. He said, you are blessed and highly favored. In the city, you are blessed. In the home, you are blessed. Among Gentiles, you are blessed. Wherever you go, you are blessed. By day, you are blessed. By noon, you are blessed. That is what God says about you. The God that can never lie. That is what God is saying concerning somebody. 
Hallelujah. And I say amen to that. What about you? What do you say to the word of God? To the promise of God? The Bible says, God Almighty says, you are precious to him. <laughs> it says, therefore, will I give many for you. I will give nations for you because you are precious before me. God says you are precious to him. That is the good news. <laughs> the God that cannot lie. This is what he's saying about you. Aren't you excited? I am excited to my bone. John Matthew God says, I am Can you imagine when your husband, a husband, a man says to his wife, you are precious to me. Or when a woman says to her husband, my husband, you are precious to me. Can you imagine how, how, how deep that is? How, if it is said from a sincere heart, but we know that God cannot lie. So God Almighty is asking me to tell you, you are precious to the Almighty God. You know what God will do? He will give nations because of you. People that are troubling you, he will fight them for you. The Lord God Almighty, the one that cannot lie, he says, when you are sick, the Bible made the provision. It says, by his stripes, you are healed. Let me show you what Isaiah said. So that somebody who listened to me can receive divine healing. Isaiah chapter 53, look at verse, uh, verse 5. Isaiah, glory be to God. Isaiah chapter 53, look at verse number 5. But he was wounded. For our what? Our transgressions. He was what? He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our sin, of our peace, was upon him. And with his stripes, we were what? No sickness is permitted in your bones. When sickness comes, command the sickness to go. Wherever it came from, command it to go. And use the balm of Gilead. Use the name of Jesus. Use the word of God. Use the promise of the Almighty God. When the enemy, this is what God says. He said, when the enemy comes against you, God says, I will arise on your behalf. That's what he says in Isaiah chapter 59. If you look at verse 19, he said, when the enemy shall come against you like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. When the enemy comes, when you are sleeping, do you know how many enemies are gathered against you waiting to pounce on you? Malihado. Especially those of you that sleep like, like a log of wood that can never wake up. You put a log of wood. Even when you kick it, it will not rise up. You are so tired to the bones. Have you seen comedies before where people, a gate man was sleeping, they pressed the horn but so loud. There are some people that you sleep so deep. You don't even wake up to go to the bathroom. You sleep so deep that I don't know. Even air tremors will not wake some people up. But the Almighty God says, I got you. The God that can never lie, He says, I got you. He says, when the enemy rises against you, even when you are sleeping like a log of wood, when you forget to pray, when you have not read your Bible, when you, are, when you are in the deepest part of your righteousness, God says, I will fight for you. That's what he says. He says, when the enemy shall come against you like a flood, the spirit of your mighty God shall lift up a standard against the enemy. Hallelujah to Jesus. Again, I say to you, child of God, the Lord will not fail. His words are true. The Lord will not fail. He cannot fail. His words are eternal. They are written and they cannot be written. They are spoken and can never come back. And that's why it says, and So is the word that proceeds out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but shall what? It shall accomplish the purpose for which I sent it. The Bible says, He sent His word. And his word deliver them, and his word heal them and deliver them from all their oppressions. Look at what the Bible says in John chapter number eight. I am excited. I don't know if somebody's been blessed as you are hearing this word of God. Let me read the word of God to you. Look at John. This is what Jesus says. Jesus says, Because this God can never lie. Jesus, you know what he did? He accused others. Uh, uh, others and the devil of lying because he himself cannot lie. That's why he's accusing other people of lying. Let me show you that in John chapter 8. Because this God cannot lie, he's accusing others. He said, there are many deceivers in the world. There are many liars in the world. They are liars. I am the true one. Look at what the Bible says. Jesus said here, John chapter 8 verse 44. Jesus says there, ye are of your father the devil and the loss of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode, abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. You see that? No truth. He said, when he speaketh, 
when he speaketh a lie, that's what the Bible says here. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So if the devil is a liar, God is not a liar. That is why he's calling him out. That is why he's telling you that the devil is a liar. All his works are lies. He's a, he's a con artist. Don't let him deceive you. And there are many that are in the world today. Their father is a liar. The devil is a liar. And he's all the things that they will say, they are lies. Who will you believe? Would you believe God, whose words never fail, the God that cannot lie, the God that cannot fail, or that man, or the arm of flesh that will fail you? Look at what the Bible says in Numbers 23, verse 19. It says there, God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man that he should lie. It says, neither, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he what? Had he spoken? And shall he not make it good? So when God says, as you have read, I read the word of God to you. So whatever God says, whatever you have found in the word of God is the truth. Hear me. Men will fail. Devil will lie. Men will lie. Man will fail you effortlessly. It's in the nature of the flesh to fail. The Bible says a carnally minded man is, is what? Is, is unrighteousness is what? Is an enemy of God. So a carnally minded man will operate and fail you with ease and gladness. Because they have the flesh. They will fail you. That is their job. They are carnal. They are enemies of God. They will fail. You see, the best of men, that's your brother, that's your uncle, <laughs> that's your father, that's your mother, they will fail you without thinking. That's your sponsor. <laughs> the best friend that you may have, they will disappoint you in the dark times when things are, it's okay, we are laughing now, when things go dark for you. They become your rivals. They desire the things that you that, that, that you have the things that give you joy all of a sudden they want it as well you will see your colleagues your mates in the office the things the moment you divert divert your plan today i'm studying this i'm doing this i'm researching this i'm going to this place i want to go to canada i want to go to us i want to go to london i want to go to lagos all of a sudden anger brews up in them because they are canal you see there are people that will promise you and they will fail they will promise and fail <laughs> they are humans and you are surprised and you are shocked. Don't be surprised. That is the nature of the canal man. You see, in your time of greatest needs, you will find that you what you did not you you don't have any backbone. You will find like me. <laughs> I know that. Hello, mm -hmm. me. I know. I don't know about you. I don't have anyone. I only have Jesus. I don't know about you. I don't have father. I don't have mother. I don't have brother. I don't have sister. They are there. But my, my reliance, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ. My hope, my, my expectation is not from any man. It's not from any man. It's from Jesus. Whatever God cannot do, a man of God say, let it remain undone. Not connection. Not No, 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 no. Not connection. No, whatever God cannot do in my life, let it remain undone. It is not for me. Don't desire it. If God doesn't do it for you, don't let any man do it for you. Because tomorrow they'll say, yes, praise the Lord. If not because of me, he will not get to that office. If not because of me, he will not marry that wife. They will tell you, they will remind you tomorrow. Some of us have experienced that. Have you experienced that? Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, you see, the hope you place in man, the hope that you place a man, it will not be recompensed. Rather, it will be with utter disappointment. Especially at moments that you are in dire needs. When you are desperate. That hope you put, you say, this man will not fail me. That is the time you will be shocked. They will fail you horribly. They will disappoint you woefully. You see, in fact, the Bible says so. The Bible says, cause is anyone that puts his trust in the arm of flesh or in man. The Bible says you're already cursed. If you're looking to man, if you're looking to uh, Canada, you're looking to America, you're looking to Oklahoma, you're looking to ab anywhere abroad. And that's why Reprobate 26, 26, you last Sunday. As cold water to a tasty soul, so is good news. Receive good news in Jesus' name. That is the best you can receive. Don't let the man be your strength. 
Don't let men be your dependence. Let your dependence be on God. That's what Jeremiah said. Look at Jeremiah chapter 17. Let me find it for you. Thus said the Lord. You can read this all the way to verse 10. I will just read some of you because of my time. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. My time is running. I have to stop very soon. Thus said the Lord. Cursed be the man that trusted in man and made flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord, for he shall not be he shall be what like the, the heat in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, simply because the man is trusting in the arm of flesh. He says, When good comes, you will not see it. You see, he says he shall what he shall what he shall what he shall inhabit the best places in the wilderness. In a salt land and not inhabited, blesses the man that trusted in the Lord, the God that cannot lie, the God that cannot fail. Blesses that man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall what? Be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreaded out her roots by the river and shall not see when the heat comes. But her leaf shall be green, amen, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Hallelujah. And then it says, the heart is deceitful above all things. And that's why I say, don't trust a man. It says, desperately wicked. Who can know it? Don't trust a man. My friend, this is what the Lord is saying to you. The Lord never fails. Make Jesus Christ your strong foundation. Make Jesus Christ your light in the midst of darkness. Depend on him. He wants to be all that you need. He wants you to believe him. He wants you to appreciate what he is doing in your life. He wants you to appreciate and thank him for what he is about to do. Be grateful. Be thankful. Know him that he is God. And there is nothing he cannot do. He will change your story for good in the mighty name of Jesus. When everything around you, when it shakes and fails, Jesus will never let you down. You didn't hear me. When every man lets you down, Jesus will never let you down. He is a friend that you can rely on in the time of your greatest need. Hallelujah. In the time of your greatest need, just call on Jesus. He will never fail you. He will not fail me. He has never failed in Jesus' name. You see, the Bible says that <laughs> put your trust in the Lord. He said, they that put their trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion that cannot be moved. You are what you are talking to the Lord that is a rock of defense and at the same time a rock of offense. At the same time, he is a rock of a of defense. At the same time, he's a rock of offense for you. He's a rock of defense to your enemies. He becomes what your rock of offense. Hallelujah to Jesus. You see, from generation to generation, he is dependable. The God that watched over Israel, the Bible says, He never sleepeth, He never slumbers, He will not fail you in Jesus' name. Psalm 121, if you read it very well, I won't have the time for now. Look at what it says. I'll read part of it for you, just because the word of God, it can never fail. The Bible says there, hallelujah. Look at Psalm 121, beginning from verse 1. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from where is cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord, which make it the heaven and the earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth Israel, he that keepeth thee shall not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not what? Shall not, uh, shall neither sleep nor slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. In verse 5, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. My friend, Jesus Christ will never fail you. Why? How do I know? Number one, he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Your father may love you. Your mother may love you. The moment you offend them, they start thinking somehow towards you. Your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband, they may love you. The moment you do something bad, they may even poison you. You see? But God says, I have loved you with an everlasting. It's everlasting. It's irrespective of whatever you do. That is amazing. Why don't you say, Lord, I, I am grateful. Lord, I am th thank you for loving me. You see, when you genuinely love somebody, you cannot lie to them. Am I lying? No, God cannot lie. When you genuinely love somebody, you know that somebody said, you know, back in the days, it says, loving somebody and somebody loves you back. 
He said, to be loved is the only thing that my heart desires. So how much more God? When God loves you, when you love God, then you know that you are in safe hands. He promised again, <laughs> it will be easier for the heaven and the earth to pass away than for the word of God. And that's how I know he cannot fail you. It will be easier. God promised. It will be easier for heaven and earth to fail than for the word of God not to come past, go to pass in your life. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 24 and 35. It says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So whatever God promises in his word that you believe, that you have faith in, and you depend on it, and you are patient with the Lord, there shall be a performance in Jesus' name. Finally, I say to you, God is dependable. You didn't hear me. God is dependable. You see, if any promise that God made, if any of it fails, that means the integrity of God fails. I will say that again. Let me take so that you can digest it. If any promise that God made, this is why he is dependable, he is trustworthy. If any promise that the Almighty God made to you, if it fails, then the integrity of God fails. But the goodness, the goodness is this. God is too faithful to fail. God is what? He is too faithful to fail. He is too trustworthy to deny himself. Because if he denies himself, he's denying his words. The word of God is God. So God cannot deny himself. He has no reason to lie. The Bible says the God of Israel cannot lie. That's what the Bible says in 1 Samuel. I love this when I saw it. 1 Samuel chapter number 15. Look at verse 29. 1 Samuel 15, 29. I, I love this. It says there in verse 29 of 1 Samuel chapter 15. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. I love that. For he is not a man that he should repent. The strength of Israel is too, is too mighty. His integrity backs his word. You see, no matter how far you are, child of God, no matter how far, no matter how deep you are, no matter the need in your life, no matter the pain that you are going through now, no matter the affliction, no matter the oppression, no matter the opposition that seeks around you, no matter the sickness or infirmity, no matter the uh, affliction of the enemy around you, he promises you. The Almighty promised that what? If you call upon him, he will come and he will save you. He will not only save you, he will deliver you. He will make you to be on top. He says, he will keep you to be on top. So call upon him. Don't be weary of calling upon him. He will not fail you in Jesus' name. Now think about it as a random. Why will God not fail? Why will the Almighty God not fail? He is a mighty God. He is mightier than the mightiest. <laughs> He is strong. He is stronger than the strongest. No one can challenge him. You know, the songwriter sings and says, I have a God that never fails. It is true. He can never fail. Other gods are, are what? Other gods, they are unreliable. There are other gods, even in the Bible, they are small Gs. There are other gods, the idols, the, the angels, the water spirits, they are there. The fallen angels, they are there. They are what? They are unreliable, but the almighty God is reliable. Those gods are, they will fail you. You see, other gods can fail. They go on holidays. They go on uh, long sabbaticals. <laughs> I have seen that before. They go into the forest sometimes. But the Almighty is omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's all knowing, omnipotent. Glory, glory be to God. As I ran though, my friend, I urge you, run to the Almighty God. He loves you, He is dependable. He is reliable. And what? He is a good God that can never lie. You see, God, he made a covenant to back his words. And this is where I'm going to round up. God made a covenant. I found this in Isaiah. God made a, a covenant, an eternal covenant, to back his words with his abiding spirit in your life. That is why when you are born again, his spirit dwells in you. So he has a covenant that is eternal. His spirit bears witness with us that we belong to him. So if you belong to him, he cannot fail you. God is present with you. Now I pray, may those that encounter you this week, may those that encounter you this week, may they see the glory of God in your life. May they see the power of God in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. May they see the newness and the faithfulness of God that can never fail your life. I say, may they see his goodness in you. 
May they see the love of God in your life all through this week in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. God says so in Isaiah 59 and 21. My covenant is with you. He says his covenant is with you because his spirit is with you. That covenant will never depart. He has spoken it and in Isaiah 59 verse 21, it will never fail. God can never fail. God bless you. Run to that God. Talk to him. He will not fail you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We're off to church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.